Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to be working on the continuization of this beam hammer build and this nice little series. This is part three and I am working on the anvil block. This is the part that is going to be working on that is going to be screwed to the base or the anvil portion of this beam hammer. In the previous video we worked on the top or the hammer portion that actually connects to the beam. So this is just like what we did with the beam. We just weld this up, our die block, to our attachment plates or cheeks or whatever you want to call them. And you want this to be a pretty tight fit. So as you can see I'm having to mallet it into position here. And, you know, this is actually a good thing. You want it to you want it to be a fairly tight fit. So this way, it really compresses the wood whenever you pull everything together. So now that that's on there, now there, I've already got my holes in place. I can go ahead and take a paddle bit and drill out the holes. So this is where good prep work on the steel first is a good thing. Now, what you're going to notice here... I'm going to start struggling with these bolts to get these through. Once again, since I just did this by eyeballing, I ended up getting the holes a little crooked. So that means they didn't want to quite line up. So that means I had to kind of just, you know, tweak it around a little bit, play with it, get a few bolts in. And in fact, at one point, you're going to even see me bend a bolt slightly just so this way I can actually get it in uh, and get this thing attached. But, you know... The straighter you drill the holes, obviously the better off this will be. So this takes a little bit of finagling because there are four bolts that you have to deal with to get these things together. But once you get them through, you know, you're in good shape. And this one I was particularly struggling with, so I just took it out and gave it a little bit of a bend. No big deal. Doot! Right on through it goes. So after we get this anvil part uh, done and completed, we're going to move on to the actual traveler system. By the way, quick mention, if you all are interested in building this power hammer and you want to know to find the plans, so this way you have detailed, detailed drawings, complete drawings of every part on this list to take and be able to build this together, you can find those plans at www.blacksmithpdfs.com and that's where you can take and find that. I'll try to put a link in every one of these videos to that in the description box down below. So as you can see I'm using a scrap piece of lumber here. This is of the same thickness and width that my actual beam is that this is going to traverse on. And what this allows me to do is this allows me to set the exact thickness that I want. If you want to put like a little spacer or something just to give it like a hair bit of space, you can do that as well at this point. But you want this to be fairly tight. That way it slides nicely on the wood itself column. Now I'm welding up the traveler pin. This pin is what's going to be connected to our tractor top link later on in the video and you'll see how that goes and then now this is the bottom piece now I didn't show drilling all the holes and all the cutting off of the, each of the individual pieces to length like I said if you have interest in that you can go check out the plans they're for a $3.99 download so you can go check those out if you have interest in knowing all the measurements but essentially this is what we've come up with so far Now, after I've got my spacers uh, for the actual traveler linkage and everything and bolt, and I figured out and made sure that was all going to work together, I figured out how far I needed to come in for the pillow block bearings. And then that's what we're mounting right now are these plates, once again outlined in the plans. But if you look at this here, I'm just trying to get this welded up. The main thing, you want these to be nice and square and you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to take our lag bolts, get a kiss from our mother, 
And then we're going to go ahead and get these all lagged on here nice and tight like. Now you can do through bolts if you like. Lag bolts are sufficient, but you can do through, through bolts. The lag bolts I'm using are six inches long, or nearly so. I think they're five inches long, and this is a six inch beam, so um, or standard construction grade lumber. So they go in fairly deep. They're not coming out. But now you guys can see the action of the traveler. This allows you to adjust the hit point or the hinge point or fulcrum, as I've mentioned in other videos, to allow you to work taller tooling underneath the actual beam hammer and to get things to where they come down and hit square and in plane. Now we'll take our beam that we finished up in part two of this video series and we will insert it into the one side and then we'll add the other pillow block bearing to it. And now you're going to see me do something here. Why are you taking that apart? Well, if you notice, that is up too high. What we want is we want the beam to be completely horizontal. Nice and parallel across the dies at its furthest down position. So the collapse position of the actual tractor top link, we want that to be at the bottom out position and it to be nice and cleanly horizontal. There you have it. So here's just a little picture of the way it's going to look when it's finished. Once again, you can find these plans at my website. God bless you all. Check the description box for more information, and we'll catch you on the next one.